Hey, let's bring them in. Um, Rose Lavelle and Sam Lewis, of course, are two stud members of the U.S. women's national team. And they're holding the World Cup trophy. This may sound silly, because I know it actually mirrors, I believe, the men's World Cup trophy, but the Stanley Cup is actually a cup. Why isn't the World Cup a cup? I don't have an answer it's for a, you on that one. It, I mean, listen, who wouldn't want to party with a cup instead of party with a trophy, even though you guys did? You guys went hard, like <laughs> surprisingly hard, I, I think, to many people after winning the World Cup. Um, yeah, it was a little surprising to me, too. I wasn't, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't expect myself to rally that much, but um, it only happens once every four years. Did you party so hard that Jill Ellis had to retire? You partied her into <laughs> retirement. I don't know about that, but we uh, we did party a lot. I was throwing out chest bumps. Um, I chest bumped <laughs> Megan Rapino so hard I broke her sunglasses. Um, so we've been dealing with the financial situation of that about me paying her back for those. What kind of sunglasses? Expensive, Expensive ones. Yeah. Expensive ones? <laughs> You're like, wait, wait, they they cost how much? <laughs> yeah, yeah, they cost like three hundred dollars. Like, they cost h- how much? <laughs> Man, the, the, and you know, you know what happens with, with sunglasses is the freebies you never lose. The expensive ones that you buy. <laughs> You always lose, or you always drop. Those are the ones you drop, or you crack, right? That's, that's or you chest bump, or you, or, I know. you or you, or you chest bump. Um, Jill did announce her retirement. What, what, what has made her such a such a special coach for the U.S. Women's National Team? Yeah, I mean, I think she's done so much for this team, and as much as she's done um, for the team, I feel like she's done so much for the future of this program and federation, and I feel like. Um, I feel like I have grown so much as a player over the past three years because of her. So I am like selfishly sad to see her go, but I'm really happy she's going out on top and gets to spend some time with her family now. You guys, it, it, look, it's completely different than the men's team from this perspective. You guys are expected to win, right? Like it's like, hey, don't come home unless you, you bring home the hardware. And this is second consecutive time you're able, able to do so. What was it like to prepare and play with those expectations? It's a huge honor. I mean, uh, neither of us was on the team in 2015, so um, we came into this in the in the cycle, and we knew that there were high expectations going into the tournament. But um, being surrounded by a lot of experienced players who were there in 15 and who have really been around the block and done so much with this team, um, it gave us so much confidence. I think to just see them out on the field there with us. Was there like a is there a secret sauce? Because it it did feel like you guys. You know, Megan brings on so much attention to herself and to the team, but you guys like fed off of it and played better because of it, which so many times great athletes like, look, that's a lot. And to to challenge world leaders, to challenge the rest of the world and to you know stare conventional wisdom in the face and go like, hey, bring it on and then perform as well or better. What, what was what's like the secret sauce to the ability for your team to deliver? Um, I don't know. I feel like the mentality of this team is just something so special and it's hard to explain unless you've experienced it. Um, I think we even say even in the England game, when it was the 80th minute and we get a PK called on us. Um, everyone was just like, you know what, whatever happens, happens. If they score, we still have 10 minutes to score again. Um, and I feel like that was just the mentality of us. The whole tournament was that whatever happens, we're prepared for whatever's thrown at us. Okay. So here's my issue with the Thailand deal. It wasn't that you guys were celebrating too hard with every goal. It was that at 12, you set the record, right? It was 12 nil, you set the record, and it was done. Was there ever a thought of like, hey, let's just bring it out and run it, run it out instead of 13? Because I, I, don't, I don't necessarily understand the – I understand a little bit of the criticism of celebrating. Like, you're supposed to have fun, but, but the 13th goal felt like adding one on. From basketball analogy, it's like pressing when you're up 30. Like, did you, did you need to um, – like I, I understand, ultimately ends up you know winning the biggest matches, but you guys did receive some critique for the thirteen goals against a Thailand team as the first time there. Um, was was it too much in hindsight? No, <laughs> I think in a World Cup, goal differential matters, and we don't know how any of the other games are going to play out. So, but there had never been a game ever in the history of the Women's World Cup where somebody had any World Cup where it had been more than eleven nil. Like it's like twelve nil. We didn't even know that. We we don't like pay attention to records. No one said. No one said that. No, no, we had no idea. I think we were just playing the best we could, and I think um, we ended up winning. And ultimately, still talking about it is pretty funny to us because we (laughs) we really weren't thinking about it. We didn't really listen to much of the criticism. Um, I think. We just did our job and we did what we had to do. All right. How's it work with the trophy? Did like each one of you guys get a day with it, a week with it? Who travels with it? How does it work? 
Um, the team keeps it. We haven't had a day with it, um, but when we do see it, like everybody takes pictures with it, it's it's always fun to bring it back around. But no, we don't do like the take it home thing. Um, maybe we should. Huh? You should? But maybe we should. Yeah. I, I mean, I, 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 why not, <laughs> right? Now, now's, now's your moment. Look into the camera. I want my moment with, <laughs> with, with, with the trophy. Your most memorable, you close your eyes 30 years from now. You're surrounded by family and friends. Your first World Cup, 2015, in France. What's your most poignant memory? Um, I don't know. I mean, I guess probably when we the whistle blew and everyone was running on the field and we like got to hug each other and celebrate. Probably that moment. What's your moment? Um, I think seeing my family in the stands after um, and just seeing them and the joy that we got to share being there together. I think I'll remember that. It's a huge stadium. I'm, I'm like, I felt like the France game was, um, was a zoo. It was kind of amazing. Was that, the, was that, what was the best of the atmospheres? Cause maybe it was, be, maybe it was how it was sold on television because you're playing, you know, in the, in their place, which, what was, what was that like? The France game was crazy. The crowd was so into it. Um, it, it was unbelievable, but I think that being in Lyon and kind of everyone knowing that's where the, the final was going to be, the crowd was just like electric. Um, and I think we had so many of our own fans there that it felt kind of felt like a home game for us. So I would say the final in Lyon, the crowd was unbelievable. Well, I mean, you guys, I mean, it's, it's one thing to talk. It's another thing to walk it. And you guys, I mean, it was it was amazing to watch. Amazing to watch. I'm sure it was incredible to, to experience. Uh, Rose and Sam, thanks so much for joining us. I Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.